These are the notes that go with section 3.2 in your book, and these are talking about some features of functions. So first, some definitions. Uh, the first definition is for domain, and domain is the input values in a function. I remember domain because it ends in the word in, and input begins with the word in. Um, remember that input values are also x's. Range are the output values in a function, so those are y's. And I remember those because if domain is input, then the other one must be the output. So range is output. Um, we then can look at functions and see if they are increasing or decreasing. Um, in simple terms, it's whether or not the function is going up or down. Um, but the formal definition talks about that for increasing, it's when the output values increase as the input values increase. So we've got both increasing. Decreasing is when the, at the output values decrease as the input values increase. We then have maximum and minimum. Maximum is the largest output value, meaning the highest on a graph. And minimum is the smallest, meaning the lowest. Now we have two types of notation that we're going to see um, throughout this chapter and the rest of the book. One of them is called set notation. And set notation is read as x such that, that's what this little, this line here means, negative 1 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 4. Essentially, x is between the numbers negative 1 and 4. And we use curly Q brackets in the front and at the end. You've seen this type of notation before. We just gave it a fancy name, and we added some fancy notation around it. Interval notation is the one that you probably haven't seen before. And I've written the exact statement above from set notation into interval notation. So any time, so we put the smallest value, the largest value, and then we either use parentheses or brackets. Parentheses are going to be used when I have less than or greater than, and brackets are going to be used when I have less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. So open circles, not included, closed circles, included. So now let's look at a couple of examples. My first example has this lovely check mark graph. And I'm asked to find the domain, the range, increasing, decreasing, and maximum, minimum. So for the domain and range, it's often helpful with these to almost kind of draw a box around the function. So I can see here that my box ends over here, or begins, ends down here. And then this arrow tells me that I don't end. So I can't really finish my box. It keeps going, keeps going. So that gives me some clue about how it is that I'm going to fill in my domain range, increasing, decreasing, maximum, and minimum. So let's look at the domain first. Domain are my x values. So that's x axis. And I start with my smallest. Well, smallest are the negatives. So my smallest is negative 2. And I put a comma. And then I do my largest. But because of that error, remember, I'm always getting larger. So then we use this lovely symbol called infinity. And it's like a sideways 8. So now I need to go back, and I'm using interval notation for these. I need to go back and I need to ask myself, parentheses, brackets, which one do I use where? So in this case, on this side, we have an open circle. Open circle means not included, means parentheses. Anytime I use the infinity symbol, I use parentheses. I never can reach infinity. You give me your largest number that you can think of, I can add one to it. Even larger, I can still add one to it. We never get there. 
My range are my y values. So I'm looking at my y axis. And just like the x values, the domain, I'm looking at smallest to largest. So my smallest y value is negative 3. And my largest, oh, we keep going up and up and up. So it's infinity. The infinity always gets the parentheses, but we need to double check. Now, the times in which you're not going to use a bracket are when they show you it's an open circle or show you it's an arrow. Every single point on this graph is a closed circle, which means this point down here is also a closed circle. So I use bracket. For the increasing and decreasing, I always want to walk my graph from left to right. That's the way we read in English. We start on the left side of the page, we read to the right. So if I start at my graph on the left-hand side and I start walking my graph, the question is, did I go down or up? And we went down. So I'm going to be decreasing, starting at x value negative 2, and I stop decreasing at x value 1. And you can use bracket or parentheses on this endpoint here. Um, depends upon what your teacher has, has told you. And that subject gets covered much more in calculus in a few years. Now from x value 1, as I walk my graph, I go up. So that is my increasing. And again, this can be a parentheses or a bracket. And I increase forever. So infinity. Um, in this case, I'm looking for a maximum or minimum. So what I often do is I often take my pen and I go from the bottom to the top. And I say, well, does my graph have a bottom? Yeah, it does. Right here is the bottom. So that means I have a minimum and that that minimum value is negative 3. When I move my pen up, my pen can go on up forever, so there is no maximum value here. Example two. Again, it's often helpful with these problems to start by um, drawing a box around the graph. So I start my box here and I go, I start way over here and I go down to the bottom here and I end over here and I end up here. And so then I, I actually can see this box around the graph. And so now I look at this and it makes it a lot easier to fill in my domain and range. Um, in this case, however, we have some gaps in our domain. So I'm going to have to actually show those gaps. So I start and I look at my smallest x value, that's domain input x's, and I can see that the smallest x value in this case is negative 8. I can also see that it's a closed circle. Now, in this case, I have a gap, which means I have to actually indicate that there are gaps. So I say that, that this piece of the domain, there's a gap here, so it stops at negative 2, and it's also a closed circle. Now, there's a symbol we have in math to indicate that we are kind of have more than one answer that we're working with, and that symbol is this, is this U. It means union. So now I'm going to do my next piece. Well, my next piece starts at negative 1 and goes until 3. Union, because I have a third piece, starts at 5 and goes to 10. All of these are closed circles, which means all of these have brackets. Now, if I didn't have a gap, I could just say from beginning to end. I wouldn't have to have this split up into three pieces. So now let's look at our range. So the smallest range here is negative 2. And I walk up, and although it ends here, actually, from here, I still keep going. However, there's a gap here. So I'm going to say that there are two pieces to my range, one that goes from negative 2,